it is the 9th of August 2022, currently 2.45pm here in Singapore. Welcome to this very special class held in celebration of Singapore's National Day. A recording of today's session will be made available via 7F5R Studios' Instagram account at 7 Forest 5 rivers and also on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash c slash 7F5R Studio. My name is Stephanie Jennifer, I'm a CZT21 and I'll be your host for this session. I'm streaming live from 7F5R Studio on this beautiful sunny Tuesday afternoon and in just a bit, I'll be joined by my co-host, Debbie New CZT. Thank you so much for joining us, whether you're watching this live or as a recording. We're so happy to have you here with us. Hello. Hi, Hi. Hi. Can you yeah. hear? Yes, yes. Is my sound uh, distorted or anything? Because no, I think the no, fan is on. Good. It's just that it's not blowing at me. Still good, still good. Yeah. So, Singapore is celebrating its 57th year of independence today. And for this class, we'll be using colours featured in the Singapore flag, namely red and white. So do grab your basic tangling supplies, a uh, pen, a pencil, potty on, a t- regular size tile. So this is 3.5 inches by 3.5 inches or 9cm by 9cm. And you'll also need a red colouring tool. So Debbie, what are you using uh, in terms of supplies for this session? So um, I have a black 01 um, Sakura mm-hmm. Micron. Right, so this is uh, what I'm going to be drawing with. And then I have, uh, so to set up my string today, I have a 14D Faber-Castell uh, pig graphite mat pencil. And then I, I'm not sure if I'm doing any highlighting, but I have a 08 jelly roll in white just in case. I also have a 10 nearby. And I have a water brush, which I may or may not be using because I decided that I'll be using Lindy's Gang. Uh, magical shaker. So this is a cuckoo clock cardinal. It's a, it's a nice red. Um, and I have um, a little jug of water or a little jar of water. And I have like a pipette and a tiny brush. I'm not sure you can see the nib. It's very tiny. So if I'm using this, I probably might not uh, need my giant water brush. In comparison, it's a giant, but it's not that big. So there are people in chat saying Happy National Day. Thank you very much. Lots of fun. We hope you tangle along with us. I'm using um, the Faber-Castell graph- pit graphite mat for in 14B. As well? Okay, I think. Yeah, just like yeah. that. Bit. And then I'm using a Micron 05. I have my 40 on. And I'll be using the uh, Tombow markers. I have two. I have 845 and 847. So well, as a backup, I also have my ink pens, pencils. So this is okay. the pack of 12. Yeah, just as a backup, you know. In yeah. case things don't work as planned. Um, or, or I could add that to shading. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. So it's a lighter red and a darker red. Of course, if you just have one red colouring tool, that will work as well. You can use watercolours, inks, markers, coloured pencils, just anything that you have. And again, a regular size tile. Uh, we're using Zentangle Original Tiles. Um, so you can use any kind of paper that you have, that you want, right? 9cm by 9cm or 3.5 inches by 3.5 inches, yeah? So let's start this session with uh, just a, a little bit of a breathing exercise. Think back, if you think back on Zentangle Inc.'s 8th uh, step to the Zentangle method, the first step is appreciation and gratitude. So you might want to just look around your drawing table for a little bit, see whether it's, if it's kind of messy, maybe straighten things out a little. That's what I've been doing uh, in the past few minutes. And then you might want to bring your awareness to your body, see whether you're sitting in an awkward position or want to straighten out yourself, you know, see whether you're holding any tension in your body uh, as of now. You might want to roll your shoulders a little, maybe tilt your head ever so gently left and right just to relax yourself a little bit. Yeah, shake out your wrists, shake out your hands if you need to. 
rotate your hands a little just to give it some movement as we start tangling. For some of you, this might be your uh, first tile of the day. For some of you, maybe you've tangled a little bit prior to this. Wherever you are, we'll be here to meet you. Yeah. So just want to take a, a deep breath, a single deep breath, just to center ourselves, deeply breathing in and out, bringing your awareness to your body, breathing in, then out, one more time, in and out. At this point, I'd like for us to think about something that we're grateful for today. Can be something very simple, like uh, now it's it's uh, afternoon here in Singapore, so perhaps I had very nice lunch today. That's what I'm grateful for. It can be something uh, bigger, maybe something of significance has happened this week, or perhaps uh, you overcame something a bit a big problem that you've been facing. So you're grateful for that. Think about that for a little while. Settle into the feeling of gratefulness. And then with that, we'll be sharing our string for this session. It's a very interesting string that Debbie has conceptualized. Debbie, would you like to share with us the string that we'll be using for this session? Sure. So in Zentangle, um, we tend to call it the eight-step method, but basically um, it's uh, eight steps where you actually configure your own method to suit yourself after you have learned the eight steps. So you basically create your own rules. Um, part of the eight step method that is um, probably universal for everyone is um, the fact that we start out with a square tile, more or less, and we have four corner dots. So the dots are basically optional today if you don't want them. But what the dots set up um, are actually your... So it sets up a border for your tile. And also... Um, Part of the eight steps method is um, to set down a string. So our string today is uh, it's got to do with Singapore turning 57. So it's a 57 string. You can actually put uh, 57 on your towel just like that. Or you can, let me just show you a few examples. You can um, pretend that you don't, have, uh, you don't have the border and you can sort of come out of your box, so to speak. And then also for those of us who speak different languages, we can actually um, change the string from a numerical 57 to something like, um, for example, I, I speak Chinese, my family is Chinese. So we actually have uh, Chinese numerals as well for the, for the, for the numeral 57. So it's 五十七. So I can actually manipulate uh, 五十七 into part of my string. And if I like, I can put an artistic border, not necessarily like from when I drew uh, the border first. So I can actually connect this with another border if I want. And that will give us a string for today. All of these strings will actually work today. So um, basically, if you just follow um, Stephanie and I, and our guided um, instructions, you'll be able to create the same tile that we'll be creating. And most of the strokes um, basically boil down to the same strokes, I, C, S, O, and dot. So if you're able to um, write the alphabet and draw a dot, basically you are able to tangle. So everything is possible um, just with one stroke at a time. That's the Zentangle um, well, it's, it's kind of like the saying that Zentangle uh, incorporates into their method. So don't be um, overwhelmed. Basically, today is a relaxing class and we're happy that you're joining us today. So Steph, what are you going to do for your string? I think I'll just stick to a regular 5 and a 7. Yeah, but really nice. 50, 57. I think it's five and seven. I like the one that uh, you shared with me previously. You had like so, a... so, yeah, this is a bigger version of it in case you can't see. Are you talking about this one? Yeah, yeah. I like the other one where like the seven sort of escapes out of the border. I thought oh. that that would be smart. Okay, are you going to use a border? Mm, probably, yeah. 
Yeah, so I'm just gonna put in a border just for fun. <laughs> I don't know whether I'll stick to it yet. So I'm gonna have like a upside down five. And uh, I'm using a 14B so that you guys can see. But if you only have like a HB or a 2B, that's fine. Um, 14B shows up better on camera. So this is going to be my string today. So I have a 7 that is kind of like escaping. And um, you need to leave, um, Steph will show you actually in a little bit, that you need to leave uh, the lower right-hand corner of your square tile uh, because we're going to do something special to that corner. So if you are uh, creating a border, just want a very light region theme with a pencil, draw four corner dots, and then you're going to add your five and your seven as a string. So if you don't know what a string is, we highly recommend that you attend a class, a Zentangle beginner's class with a certified Zentangle teacher closest to you. Zentangle math is lots of fun. It's always great to uh, know, get to know the basics with a certified Zentango teacher that can best bring you through the eight steps of... Do you mean nearest to you or closest to you? Well, closest oh. to you means like you are very intimate, you know? Oh, I mean, yeah. if your wife is a Zentango teacher, if your best friend oh my is gosh. a Zentango teacher... Then sure, if I don't have anybody, you, then how? Then you make friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that sounds like what I said to you last week. Right? Yeah, make friends. Yes. <laughs> that's 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 what I said to you and, and Susan last week. Mm, must make friends, cannot not know anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So we have our string. Well, we're down with, uh, on our tile. So we are going to be drawing our first tangle. It's a tangle called Eternity. I'm going to be showing you how to draw it first. So Eternity basically is, uh, we're using tangles that uh, Debbie and I deconstructed today. She says it's Singapore tangles, but I have not received my Singapore citizenship yet said. We are PR. It's, it's due to um, citizenship laws at the point of time when I was born. But anyways, let's not talk about that. <laughs> but you are per we are a permanent resident. Right? Yes, yes. And I want to be a Singapore citizen. Apply already. Okay, everyone. Your daughter is a Singapore citizen. And so is your husband. husband so is your yeah. mom. So then you can't escape. Nah. I, I I lose out so sad. <laughs> I, want, I want then the government's like, mm, No. <laughs> Well, yeah. to be fair, you had like 20 years of being <laughs> able to apply, but you didn't, so... Terrible, right? Let's, let's not uh, count the first six years, lah, right? First six, oh. <laughs> <laughs> first six years. It's like, oh yeah, I was a child, yeah. Alright, so Eternity was uh, a tangle that I gifted to my husband. Basically, it's a heart-shaped uh, tangle, but it's created using, in a kind of like a holly bow kind of fashion, if you know the tangle holly bow. Basically, you start off with two parallel lines. And then on this point, we're going to draw the bottom part of the heart. So then you're going to imagine that this uh, holly bow goes behind here. So it comes out on the other side. So usually I draw this sort of shape. And then I all right. So you can see it's kind of like this goes behind here and continues out. And then we're going to imagine that the first two initial lines that we drew go behind here. And then they come up and then connect to this part. So I usually start from here and then I connect it down here. And then I finish off the heart. And then we extend this behind. So that it creates this sort of knot, knot that we've created using only about. It's a knotty tangle. It's a knotty tangle. So depending on how thin or thick your parallel lines are, it will change the look of the tangle. Eater knotty. Eater. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Eater knotty. Mm. I realize that I draw it very different from you. Huh. Yeah. But it's okay la. As long as yes. you get the, the shape. Nah. The vibe, yes. We're here for vibes, not for... Eternity. 
<laughs> so naughty. Yeah. So basically, I have my five and my seven. Of course, your string might look different from uh, ours. So you can see even Debbie's string looks slightly different from mine. Basically, we're gonna if you're using a micron pen, you're going to want uh, your eternity to be drawn about one pen cap length from the corner, the edge, bottom edge, bottom right edge of your tile. So I'm just making a little mark. And then I'm turning my pen cap the other side and then making another little mark. So you're going to want your eater naughty <laughs> to uh, connect to these two points. Right? If you're worried, because uh, eternity is, is a, a kind of tangle that takes a while to get used to drawing. You might want to use a pencil for this. Yeah. So you can draw your Eternauti. Better not it's called Eternauti anymore. <laughs> Later it really sticks in people's memory as Eternauti. If, um, depending on how thick or thin you want it, the, the basic idea is at the end of this class, we'll be colouring in this Eternauti in red. So that is where the red will come in. Let's not get ahead of ourselves though. Let's just draw the tangle first. I think I know why you deconstructed this tangle. Why? It looks like a pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see it now. <laughs> we walk by a pretzel shop. You know what? That could be a tangle. <laughs> and then I'm come hungry. out with like come, yeah, come out with like some romantic story like oh, you know my relationship with my husband. I hope it lasts forever. But actually, no, actually just you know, pretzel. you know they call it comfort food, right? So mm. so basically Pretzel could be somebody's comfort food, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretzel is nice though. <laughs> yeah, so if this is your first time tuning in, right? You... <laughs> it's, it's chaos every week. Yes, it's like this. <laughs> well, basically, um, we go live every week on Wednesdays, uh, usually mm. with Susan as well. Yeah, she's in chat. Yeah. I saw her in chat just now. Yes, I saw her. Maybe maybe she chose to leave already. Mm. Like all the lame jokes, right? Mm. Yeah. So we said, okay, I'm not going to be part of this. It's okay. Mute it. Mute it. Alright. So we have our eternity. The next tangle that I have to sh I'm going to share with you guys is a tangle called Lola. So I do know that there, are, uh, there is another Lola tangle by a different person, a different tangler. But this Lola uh, was dedicated to my daughter, Charlotte. Yeah, so Lola apparently is uh, one of the nicknames for Charlotte. But then I thought like, well, maybe like she her her Nickname would be Lola. She grew up, but but, but no nobody has name. called her Lola so far. Yeah, right? potato. I think it's too but, far fetched from Charlotte. Though. But it's like Richard and Dick. Like how do you get? <laughs> how is the nickname that? But it's that. Then how do you get potato from Charlotte? Here we go. You you started calling her potato, and then that's my husband calls her Bubby. <laughs> Which means piglet in Bahasa Malayu, but it's it's said in in uh, in uh, in the term of endearment. All right, so we start off with a leaf shape. From this leaf shape, you're going to draw kind of a flux shape. So a thin upside down, no, a, th a thin stretch <laughs> flux. It's not upside down; it's right side up. And then you're gonna give it a uh, friends either side. So you can see it's kind of sloping downwards. So it's getting shorter with each um, each line that I'm drawing. And I'm, the goal is I'm trying to connect it to this bottom of the, the little leaf shape that we started with. Then you're going to repeat that mirror image on the other side. And then if you find this difficult, um, on the step outs, I actually say you can use your pencil to draw a large um, leaf shape and then have that as your guide. So basically, my flux will follow the edge of this pencil uh, guidelines that I've made. I know that some Zentangle teachers discourage their students from like using uh, pencil guidelines. But I always say that Zen Tangle, not Stress Tangle. So if you feel that you need a little bit of extra help uh, when you're first learning to draw a tangle, by all means, 
go ahead and, and use your pencil. We'll you write a long way to do this. So we are going to choose a section on our tile to add Lola. Uh, following our class plan, we want it close to eternity. However, you could, of course, uh, choose a smaller section on your tile. Like for example, maybe I want to have a Lola here. Or maybe I want to have a Lola in this section. That's completely up to you as well. Okay. Maybe I might start uh, drawing a Lola from, say, here. So no, no right or wrong way to do this. So how many do you want? How many do I want? How much yeah, space how do you have do you... in your time? I think you can I think probably, I have a lot of space. Yeah, you can probably comfortably yeah. fit two or three at this point. But Debbie will be sharing two other tangles with us. So you may want to not be too enthusiastic in it. Like, oh, I can fit well, five, Lola. <laughs> well, you can always uh, start another tile. Mm, yes, yes. Yeah. So I'm drawing my uh, second Lola a little behind my eternity. Is your fan on rotation, Demi? Why? Because Is it bothering me? Yeah. yeah, so just now I was asking about it and then you said no. It's okay. I, I didn't move it. I didn't move anything. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't move maybe anything. When you're, maybe when, when you're not speaking, then the fan is like, hello. But the window <laughs> is open though. Okay. Go. Do you want me to move the fan? But I didn't I move anything fine. though. I think it's the window. I think it'll be fine. Or I can mute myself. No. <laughs> Don't want to talk. Yeah, you, you can no talk by yourself. No talk me. <laughs> yeah, it's probably the window. I think I think it's quite it's quite windy today. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't know. Where I am la, where I am, not where you are. Singapore very small. <laughs> you are in an air conditioned building. Yeah. <laughs> the building is shut. It's like yeah, not I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, this is our uh, usual nonsense. Banter. Banter nonsense. I'm just adding a little bit of ink on uh, the corners of uh, the flux shape in my Lola. Cannot see that like, your hand is blocking your towel. So maybe you yeah, need an angle. Also, you are doing Lola in opposite directions, is it? Mm. Let me figure out if I have space for it. Mm. So maybe I'll, I'll do it differently to you so that there's some variety. Mm. I'll, I'll use my number seven on my string and sort of plant my second Lola here. So, so um, for those of you who are not very familiar with us, usually when we have our uh, studio live show on Wednesdays, we um, actually come live at the same time slot, but on a Wednesday. And usually we try to do different things to each other so that there's more uh, in terms of variety that you can watch. So, but this being a class, is kind of like slightly different. So our Wednesday's um, program is basically a social tangling session rather than a class. So you basically get to watch how uh, the three of us, including Susan Yo, uh, hang out and sort of draw together based off the prompts that we host in our Facebook group. So all of us have uh, very different ways of interpreting uh, the same prompts and that is kind of what makes it fun. I think. <laughs> Alright, so for those of you who have just joined us, basically the string that we used today was uh, inspired by the numbers 5 and 7 because it's Singapore's 57th year of independence. Uh, one of the options was uh, writing 57 in your own native language if possible. For example, Mandarin, right? 
Um, and then the tangles that we've used so far, Eternity and Lola, they are tangles by me. And then Debbie will be sharing with us two more tangles for our tile. So for our next tangle, um, basically there are kind of a few ways to draw the next tangle. It's um, quite a new tangle in the sense that uh, I was playing with it um, long before I decided to claim it. But uh, I basically just claimed it only kind of like a couple of weeks ago, or is it three weeks ago? So um, I have the step outs with me and you can also refer to the step outs um, on my Instagram feed. So it's called Symphony, as in symphony, but it's spelled uh, in a way that incorporates Singapore and Stephanie. So you can read more because, about it on our blog. Yeah. Because I requested that it's, it's from me. People you didn't usually, request. People usually gift, 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 gifts to others. I request, I take, I want. It wasn't, it wasn't. <laughs> So much of a request was more like a demand. No, no, it's more like, oh, is it? Because, okay. No, it's like, it's oh, it's S. mine. What yeah. Me? What's I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then he was like, no, it's S for Singapore. Like, oh. Yeah, but I gave it to her anyway. So here we are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Shay, symphony, you can, draw, you can draw symphony in a couple of ways. Um, I'm going to show you um, my notes Basically, let me try and zoom out without trying to crash this whole setup. It, uh, there we go. So, these are actually my original notes uh, from when I was uh, playing around with the tangle. And I like to draw a cursive S because um, my, both my business partners, Susan and Stephanie, obviously begin with S uh, in their names. And my aunt also... Uh, starts uh her name starts with an s as well and a couple of my other cousins so i actually get a lot of practice uh drawing the cursive s but if you find that this is difficult so basically um what we do is we just draw an s stroke and where you kind of um have all these pretty curves you can actually add like a bit of rounding or a bit of uh, additional line work to make it uh, look a bit more fleshed out so that's how I do the cursive S. But I'm also aware that some people struggle um, with making the proportions correct and stuff like that. So to kind of minimize that, you can also start with a, a straight line instead like that. And then just come back this way. And then add your additional line work uh, as you would. Or not. That's up to you. And then of course, if I've done this, I can also pretend that, you know, there was a loop. I just add it on. That's if you want uh, a kind of look. So based off, uh, based off the different S shapes that you have chosen, you can actually create different shapes and also how many S shapes do you want. You can also create different um, numbers of petals. So showing um, this one where you have like eight different sized um, S strokes and then this one has five. So these were my notes. Uh, the step outs are actually on my current Instagram feed already. And I have a couple of examples here that I would like to show you as well. So this one is actually um, Symphony with Luna Flux. With Luna Flux and Inner Flow. And then I also have... Um, I also have this tiny 3Z. So this is just three S strokes in, um, in a little dingbats with three inner fluxes. So this one had lunar flux and this one had inner flux. And then I also have another tree Z where I converted the, the orb into a gemstone or a dewdrop or a pearl. Depends on you. I, I'm not sure whether you can see it. It's kind of like a, a light grey or a light warm grey and brown pen so brown micron and black micron and this one was paired with vertigo um i think this one uh, so this one has six uh s strokes and then this one has three so depending on how uh dense you want your flower to be you can sort of vary uh the look you can see that all the different um 
all the different blooms have a different appeal. So we're trying to go towards something like that for our tile today because uh, we have a lot of space to fill. So something like that. And I also have it on my sample, but I'll show you my sample later because I don't want to give everything away, right? So something like that would be nice. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put down an op somewhere above my Lola. If your number five uh, makes a lovely op, you can use that as an op as well. So I'm going to just grab my pencil to just show you what I'm talking about. You can actually convert this little um, five, the arch in your five to an orb. Or you can put another orb here if you want. I'm drawing a kind of large so that you can see, but I might not use the entire um, area for my orb. It's kind of too large uh, in proportion to the rest of my towel. But just so you can see what I'm, well, where I'm coming from. So moving to my micron, um, I drew this uh, pencils just to in pencil just to show you how um, where I'm going to work at. But I'm going to scale down my op a little bit just to fit in with the rest of uh, my towel. So I'm hiding uh, a symphony um, behind my Lola. And then this one will be probably by itself without being hidden. So you'll see that I've actually adjusted uh, the size of my op naturally. So naturally just to fit in with the rest of uh, the towel. So I'm going to start out with this one. So that, uh, or maybe I should start out with this one here. So that this one will sort of like stand out. Okay, so I'll start out with this one. And you'll notice that I have a bit of like a different uh, length between the top of my towel and the one here. So maybe it might be better to start with this one so that I can have like the full petal here. So when um, we teach Zentangle, Stephanie and I, we usually tell people to start from where uh, your eye is likely to meet the towel uh, the first time. So for example, if I'm looking at my towel, um, usually your eye will follow um, the center of your towel. So that's where I would prefer to begin so that it gives you more uh, space uh, and also it gives you more confidence as you build around to the sides. So I'm going to start out with this little um, space here between my number 5 and my Lola. And I'm just going to put down very lightly in my 01 pen. Of course, if you've got a 05 pen, that will work as well. A basic S shape. So you can see that uh, this is just a normal cursive S. And if I'm not uh, satisfied with the width of it, I can actually add to it to sort of... Uh, plump it up or fatten it up and give it a little more heft, right? So that's the beginning of my symphony. And I'm turning my towel to deal with this one now, this gap now. So again, another air shape, right? So I, I drew this a kind of uh, skinny, so I'm compensating with a bit of uh, extra line work. Right, so rotating again. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this one now, and I'm just gonna pretend that it's uh, symmetrical or almost symmetrical to the one that I put down earlier. And fleshing it out. Right, so now I'm left with this uh, little half of a petal. So I'm just going to pretend that it goes off of the towel, like this. Okay, and then I'm flashing it out. Just give it a bit more chunkiness. Is chunkiness a word? It's, it's probably a millennial word, like a... Millennial word. Not, not a, in a <laughs> proper oh, dictionary. So it's not a word? Cannot, cannot use it in a uni. <laughs> okay, so now I've got my four petals. I'm going to add a little aura. So in Zentangle terminology, when you outline an existing shape, that's an aura. Um, you, you start to notice a slight uh, difference in the nuance when you have an aura. So your, your heftiness will feel more hefty. <laughs> So it's chunky part of Debbie, Debbieology. 
I don't know. Chunky. Mm, but I'm not a millennial. Oh, <laughs> fake one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a millennial. I wish I were, but I wasn't. I wasn't born that late. So by your logic, only, only millennials can use the word? Chunky is internet slang. Not millennial. And I just checked it's not part of this. <laughs> okay, so after adding your aura, you start to feel like uh, you are actually drawing a bloom. Uh, and then some part of my aura is going to be tucked behind my Lola. So you start to realize that actually um, it kind of looks nice like that. But then, if you let me just show you an example again, uh, fishing out an example. Hang on, I need two hands. <laughs> okay, so I've got I've got one where I've actually um, filled in the shapes or the lines so that your contrast uh, is more apparent. Yeah, so. It's up to you if you want to do this, that. But um, I'm just going to show you how I like to shade it quickly. I fill it with uh, either a 0 5, so I have a 0 5, or a PN, which is basically also the same width. And I do that because I don't want to kill my Micron 0 1, because the 0 1 is a very fine tip. So I'm just going to switch over and sort of show you how I just uh, work on one. This is optional, so don't feel you have to do anything that you don't want to do to your towel. But uh, shading in the S shapes will make your symphony stand out. Okay, so just very quickly and very lightly, just filling in. I'll probably come back to this. So I, I still have another symphony that I need to put down on my towel, but I'm just showing you uh, what I mean. Okay, so I've got another op here, and this time around, you get to choose whether you are going to use um, this S or the straight version. So if you're, if you're doing the straight version, it's kind of fun as well because um, I like to use the side of the op to start off my line. So you can actually uh, start out your line like that with your op when you're using the straight version. <laughs> And I see why we had to aura first, so that it's part of, uh, you know, if you are going under this, it, it still works. Right, so I'm just going to pretend that I'm using the other version of Symphony. And there you have like a slightly different look compared to your first one. Of course, if you want to use both uh, the same kind of styles, that's fine as well. Uh, your towel will look very pretty as well. So there are no, um, there are no rules per se, like uh, the, the exact uh, same way of drawing something. Um, and I think that's part of the beauty of Zentangle. You have to make a lot of choices. So at the end of your towel, you feel very empowered because you know, no towel will look like yours. Because no decision making was uh, the same. So um, I leave you to decide whether you would like to aura the second one, but I will actually aura the inside because I have like a nice little gap here between my S shapes and my orb. And drawing in the aura actually gives it um, extra petals. So I've now got triangular petals. Right? So at this point, um, you can actually also, okay, maybe I should, should I aura, Steph, this one? What do you think? If you want. I think, I, I think I'll aura it just to make it more obvious on camera. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to aura it gently with my 01 pen. Uh, can you see? Am I blocking? Kind of blocking, but it's okay. Kind of blocking it. I'm already at the mm. side. Eh? Okay, let me see how I can maneuver. Because our, because our cameras are top now. Yeah. So you can do it to tangle it. Angle. But I'm already at an angle, so 
Maybe I should. Let's see if I can. Yeah, we're gonna draw it this way. Is it still working? Is it better? Better, yeah, better. Okay. Um, for the op, you can also sort of put down auras on the inside if you want. Uh, of course, if you're done with uh, auraing, that's that's fine as well. So oh, I like to change um up the ops to sort of suit my mood. So sometimes I use like a bronze cheer sort of op where you have a lot of people in the center. Um, and then of course I can sort of like shade it to look like a pearl or something else or a marble. So you get to decide what you would like to do. And of course this one, I actually put in inner fleur in my op, right? So if you find that the orb is too large, you can actually add in uh, auras again to the center to make it slightly smaller. So I think I shall just do one as a demo. So this is how to bring down the size of your orb. Of course, if after doing this, your orb is still too large. You can put in an, an additional aura if you want so that it kind of brings it down even further. So I'm going to show you um, briefly the next tangle and let you decide whether you want to sort of uh, populate the rest of your towel with it or insert it in between um, your symphony. Okay, so I've got a spare piece of paper here. And I'm going to switch over to my 05 pen so that you can see. So um, in Zentangle, the basic shape uh, that Stephanie introduced um, just now was flux. So flux basically has two shapes. Uh, it's drawn like that as well as like that. It depends uh, whether you are following. I think this is Maria's way of drawing and this is Rick's way of drawing. So Maria and Rick are founders of Zentangle and Flux is a tangle that was introduced by Zentangle Inc. So based off Flux, um, there have been many wonderful tangles that are based off Flux, like Lola is one of them. And I personally uh, have used Flux in so many of my tangles that I feel kind of embarrassed because there are just so many of them. And they all just uh, stem from my love of this tangle. So... Um, I'm going to show you today how to draw Luna Flux. So just now we had Symphony, which is currently uh, also on my social media as the Tangle of the Week. So Luna Flux begins with a flux and you can actually uh, stick to one or you can actually choose to add in more um, of these flat shapes. Either way is fine. Um, and what we like to do is we add an aura with a little sort of like a blob at the end. And this is your single inner flux, uh, lunar flux, lunar flux, sorry. <laughs> Just too many. And then you can grow them by adding more this way, right? Um, or you can have like a trio and then you start your stem this way and your aura. And then you come back down this way. So different ways to draw. This is a trio. You can also draw more than three if you like. Um, and of course, you can sort of like uh, mix them or match them together. Right, so I've so in one of my examples, I actually showed you um, how to sort of put in a single stock as well as a trio uh, in between your symphony. So I'm gonna do that on one of my symphonies, but the rest of my lunar flux will be kind of like a uh, loose, or well, not really loose, but like well, when I have uh, if I have space, I'm just gonna put them in at random. So going back to my towel, let me just move these aside. So going back to my towel, um, I'm going back with my 01 pen. Of course, if you are using 05, go back to your 05 pen or your PN. 
I'm going to use um, the trio lunar flux here on one of my symphonies. Right, and then I'm adding the aura. And continuing down to, to finish the stock. And where I have a gap, you can choose to ink this in or I'm just going to put in like a bit of uh, a tipple or an orb just to fill up that tiny gap. Rotating my towel, I'm coming to the next gap here with uh, between my two S strokes. So putting down my aura, pretending that one is cut off, and then coming back down with the stem. And filling in my ops. Okay, so rotating again. Uh, we rotate our tiles very often in Zentangle because uh, it's easier to reach um, the different areas of your tile that way and also to prevent like a strain on your arm. So I think recently I was having a conversation with uh, another CZT about how people don't write letters anymore. <laughs> People text, people email, but you know, letter writing has kind of like disappeared. She was uh, admiring um, the Tangle Symphony and she thought that it was fun because you know, it kind of encourages you to do lettering, um, incorporate lettering into your art in a very subtle way um, without actually writing like a full blown letter. So I thought it was, uh, I, I didn't see it that way uh, when I when I deconstructed a tangle, for me, it was just a tangle. But for her, it was like, oh, lettering, you know, it's fun. And, and it, was, it was quite a, a nice conversation we had. Yeah, because her take on things was that, you know, everyone's going automated now. Everyone is texting. Nobody does like cursive or, or longhand anymore and stuff like that. So I'm, I've actually put down uh, two symphonies and one with Luna Flux. So at this point, you can also... Um, Decide if you want to branch out your lunar flux, like a uh, long stem lunar flux. Or you can also uh, introduce more lunar flux um, to sort of uh, build the density around your other symphony. And if you have extra space here, you can actually add in more Lola, like I might add in more Lola. So I'm just going to check in with Stephanie to see how she's doing. So how are you doing, Steph? Yeah, I'm doing good. Do you want to talk about how to flesh out your towel? Because I see your towel has a lot in it. A lot happened, eh? We didn't just yeah. now. And now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the fun thing about Lola is that you can actually use it to fit any sort of space. Let me just demonstrate what I mean. So, if say, uh, just now we learned that you could fit it into a leaf shape. If say there's an irregular space, right, what you can actually do is you start off with that little leaf shape and then you can make Lola fit into the irregular shape. All you're making sure is that the uh, sort of flux shape that you're drawing touch the edges of your irregular shape. So this makes it a uh, useful tangle because if you have a very awkward kind of space that you don't know what to do, you can actually use Lola to kind of fit into that, that little awkward space. So I've added um, some lolas. You notice this little section on the lower right corner, just past my eternity. There's this very weird kind of, it's not quite triangular, but it's triangular-ish. Past your like, eternity. Past my eternity, yeah. Uh, it sounds like a very long time. <laughs> very, very long time. <laughs> yeah, so I did that. And then I added some tipple uh, floating around just for extra details. Um, and then I added uh, uh, an aura to my border. So it kind of creates a frame. And then I could uh, then add more Lola. And then over here, I did 
lunar flux behind that border. So it gives uh, my drawing a little bit of extra dimension. So when you're drawing Zentangle art, basically you're just creating layers. Right? That's how you make your artwork look interesting uh, visually. Because if it's just, oh, the string is there, I draw one tangle in this section, another tangle in that section, that's fine. But uh, what ends up happening is your drawing might end up looking a little flat. So it's just a very simple way of adding interest to your time. But some people do like flat, you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I get it, I get it. There's different, like, for example, you see you're doing this on a tinted background. And that might be different, right? Because maybe, oh, the background looks very nice. I don't actually want to take away from, from it. So I want more of the background to shine through. And that's valid as well. Yeah, but if you want to add visual interest, the way to do it in the tangle art is just to layer your tangles. Nothing fancy. Just draw behind a lot. Okay, I think I am ready for shading. Hello to everyone in chat. If you're watching this live, thank you so much for joining us. I'm happy to have you here. If you're watching this as a recording, leave us a, leave us a comment in the comment section below. We, we do read the comments that you leave. We appreciate the interaction that we have with you guys. And again, um, a recording of today's session will be made available on our Instagram, 7 Forest 5 Rivers, and also on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash c slash 7 at 5 Rs Studio. If you tangle along with us, like Debbie mentioned, uh, one of the featured challenges within the 7 and 5 r challenge group on facebook is actually symphony so you could actually post your tile in the 7 and 5 r challenge group you can search 7 f 5 r challenge directly in your facebook search bar or go to bit.ly slash fb 7 f 5 r you just need to answer some security simple security questions for us to make sure that you're not a bot and now uh, it's free to drawing you can participate in the weekly and fortnightly Tango Challenges. And then also upcoming in October will be the Inktober Tangles 2022. Uh, I think they can also click through the link in our bios. Um, yes. Yeah, so to get to the group faster, you can do that as well. Hmm. Um, yeah, and I think um, that's way easier if you ask me. Because then it will launch your app, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you click through and then you launch your Facebook app and stuff like that. So, we, we are always looking for feedback. So, you can always write in to us. Uh, we always uh, enjoy hearing from Tangles all over the world. Uh, whether you are CZT or not, uh, I don't think it really, really matters to us. Because we, we have been um, enjoying the community for many years now. And a part of how we give back to the community is through challenges like these. So it remains kind of like fun and fresh for us as well. Stephanie also hosts um, the Inktober Tangles every year. So maybe Steph, you want to tell them about that one? Yeah, I did. I did mention it. Mm. So the prompts will be posted um, on my personal Instagram page and also in 7F5R Studios Instagram page on 1st September 2022. That's a full month ahead of October just so that everyone has time to prepare. Some people like to uh, buy a new sketchbook for the challenge. Some people like to tint tiles ahead of time. And then some people like to plan the tiles that they'll be uh, creating, working on in October. So Why September, they don't do it? Oh, they don't do it. Like, don't do the challenge. <laughs> Is it you're asking for yourself? Like, I don't do it. Asking for a friend. <laughs> asking for a friend. <laughs> asking for a friend. So the yeah, idea was Inktober, 
<laughs> the idea of Inktober, so Inktober was not created by me, it was created by someone else. I just adapted the idea to fit uh, Zen Hangle better. But the idea behind it is that you cultivate this habit of drawing every day. That's, that's just the basic idea behind the entire challenge. So a lot of people are actually very stressed, like, oh, I have to complete one part each day, or I have to make the artwork look very finished and very professional. But that's not true necessarily true maybe in one towel you you do four tangles so you stretch one towel for four days or maybe i saw someone do one bijou each day and then i saw another person uh, just basically adding tangles to their sketchbook so each day they just add one tangle to their sketchbook page and then at the end of the challenge they had a completed sketchbook page so it's just small things you know that you want to do and the idea is that just to cultivate the habit of drawing something every day yeah so no pressure and of course if let's say you don't like a tangle or if you miss a day it's fine no one's gonna oh you never complete the whole entire challenge <laughs> no such thing like, it's just a fun thing to, to get she the only one trip. that she does that to is to me so you don't have to worry. yes yeah. yes it's she just... she will usually harass me until i get it done so <laughs> yes <laughs> that comes with the terrain of being uh, like sharing a, a friend with her yeah terrible yeah. not yeah, good man. to be friends someone, yeah, <laughs> someone, someone in chat said I love participating all the tangles last year as most of them were new to me yeah I do try to have a mix of uh, official tangles and the non-official tangles so if you actually notice it's um every four to five days there'll be one official tangle as a prompt so the list mostly is non-official tangles and I do try to support uh, Zen Tangle teachers and I do try to introduce new tangles that most people might not have heard of uh, just so that you know you can expand your tangling library, your tangle library and then hopefully find a new tangle that you absolutely love and you'll be able to use uh, for the rest of the year and moving forward from, from Inktober onwards. Yeah. Yeah, that's so fun. All right, Debbie, shall we move into shading or tiles? Yeah, that's your portion, right? Yeah, yeah, just checking everywhere. Yeah. You... <laughs> oh, I'm very right. far behind. I'm very slow. So <laughs> let's just push, push. go right so, on. Yeah. So if you are like Debbie and you tangle slowly and mindfully, that's fine too. Yeah, yeah it was definitely. There. Yes. <laughs> Recording is there. You can always, you know, watch it later on. And watch well, it, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a uh, joke because she always draws very fast, mm. and then our students, um, uh, and I would be like, you know, trailing along behind happily. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe not struggling. Maybe it's just oh, you you tangle fast, tangle fast. <laughs> it's, yeah, she's always it's in a, a hurry though. I it's don't a know hab- why. It, no, it's a habit from um. When I used to teach at community centers with the kids, kids are very demanding. Teacher Stephanie, you are very demanding too, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm like a small child, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like symphony, right? All right, yeah, my one. Yeah. All right, so oh, it's um, mine. For me, I'm like okay. Well, but Can... I did, I did give it to her in the end, so she, she won. Okay, yeah, willingly. Um, willingly. Well, I figured out. I figure out. That willing hostage. If I give it, see, if I if I give it to her, she can love me back. Mm, if I yes. give it to Singapore, Singapore can't love me back. Very well, good. not in the way that I want. Nah. Very good. <laughs> so, very, very fast, right? Very good. Value for I sound, money. I sound very deprived now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Singapore, at Singapore, the government. <laughs> Sounds so deprived. Yeah. All right. So, what I did first, if you, if you uh, outline your border, you can follow along. I'm actually shading the inside of my border. If you shade the outside of your border, what that will do is you'll push all of the tangles forward. Whereas if you shade the inside of your border, it will look like the inside is a frame and it's sinking in. So depending on the look that you want, you can you know, decide on what you want for your own tile. Um, for those of you who might be beginner tanglers and you don't have this tortillon, it's basically your blending stump. You should be able to get it at your local art store. And if you aren't able to get it, you can just use a cotton swab. So that's an easily available household product that you can use. And then, of course, I have students ask me, can I use my fingers? So the reason that we use a tortillon is because our tile is quite small. This gives us more precision. And also our fingers contain natural oils. 
So using this will prevent uh, our finger, the oils from our fingers to transfer onto our paper and uh, sort of ruin our shading. Yeah. So shading the inside of our border. Next, we're going to shade our low level. We're going to shade the points where the lines converge. So just a little at the bottom. And you want to shade in proportion to how tall your uh, little flux shape is. So if your flux shape is really tall, if you've drawn your Lola really large, you want to add more shading to your tile. If your Lola, like uh, Debbie's tile, is a little more compact, you might want to ease up on the shading just so then you don't overwhelm your tile with too much graphite. Yeah, Kind of like cooking, you know, if you add too little salt to your soup, you can always add more later. If you add too much, it's a little more difficult to balance the taste again after, right? So you get two little sheets. Or you can start a new towel. I feel that I the mean, solution to everything is just, just throw it away. I didn't say <laughs> throw it away. I mean, just start a new one. Ah. I mean, why? I mean, well, I mean, if, you don't, what, you don't what, have a shit if you don't want to anyway. Right? What if I'm a perfectionist? Yeah. Then like, I start like 101 towels that I just never complete. Or oh, then too bad. Ah. So Give sad. them away. Uh, actually, I know what to do mm, with them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you can actually um, send them over to someone else mm. uh, through the Traveling Hangles project and then mm. someone else can complete your tile for you and that you solves your see. problem. Then you can see actually, it wasn't that bad. It's just you are your own worst critic, you know? Okay, for, for me, right, I decided that uh, all my pencil lines are uh, very distracting. They're distracting the heck out of me and I need to erase them. But um, usually, usually I don't erase them. Stephanie is the one who would usually erase them. But yes. today, they're very distracting. I don't know why. I can't focus. So, <laughs> off, so that's off, why. Off camera, I used the party eraser, kneadable art eraser from Faber-Castell. Yeah, so she has this fancy, yeah. fancy thing. But I'm just using something that I had from like, Probably 10, De 20 years ago. So. Debbie bought me this fancy, fancy thing. So very happy. What did I buy you? <laughs> the needable eraser you bought for me at eh? the Faber Castell boutique store. Oh, I bought I bought for everybody because everyone is <laughs> he's going to get it. <laughs> Bye, we need that. Actually, very nice. Huh? I didn't just buy for you, Steph. You bought uh, for me If you first. want to think that way, you can. You bought for no, me No, no, no. I, I bought for Susan first. And, huh, then, and, that one. and then and then you, I told her right now. <laughs> no, no, because I asked you whether you wanted or not, whether don't you wanted need. it or not. And, and you told me no, right? So don't I need. went to the cashier with uh, two. Um, I was going to get one for Susan and myself. Hmm. And then and then Steph how came out I and have? yeah, how come I don't have? I'm like, you said you don't want what? I'm like, okay, so so hmm. there you have it. That's how she. That's how she demands things. Con mm. money lifestyle. It's not con Mari. For those of you who know about con <laughs> Mari, it's not con Mari lifestyle. Later we get con slander. Hey. <laughs> no, misuse. She, no, no, not saying misuse she of the money. brand. I, I con money. <laughs> misuse. Misuse. Susan Yo is chuckling yeah. at home. Her legal team, yeah. please don't come find us. This not yeah, what we meant. <laughs> yeah, so, so remember I said I have like a backup uh, the way intense, right? I may use this to color instead of shade. So Steph has shaded with graphite. Um, mm. And one reason why I remove my graphite from my towel is because I might use color pencil uh, shading uh, afterwards. So we'll see how it goes. I've actually taken out some pigment from my Lindy's Gang. Um, this is uh, Cuckoo Clock Cardinal. Mm. Um, I'm using a shaker, but they do them in pots as well. Uh, I think this is part of the 2017 box mm. set. So it comes in like a pack of 10, I think. Do they sell this one loose? I don't think so, right? No, yeah. they don't. So, so some, some of them are not, yeah, some of them are not so loose. So this is a studio box that uh, I've uh, borrowed. And you basically only need just a tiny bit of pigment. Um, and I'm just going to grab my pipette. So I have like a bit of water here and a tiny brush and a pipette. So grab some water in your pipette and sort of like uh, add. I like to add like maybe three drops at once first before I go crazy and add more. Because basically it's kind of like what Stephanie says, if you add too much at once, you can't undo, right? Uh, whereas if you add a little bit to it, you can sort of control the 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 intensity of the color. 
So you don't want it to be too um, liquid um, and then you don't want it to be too much uh, pigment as well that you can't uh, manipulate. So somewhere in between, uh, which would you find? Yeah, sorry, Steph. Please continue. No worries. So back to shading, what I did was I shaded a little bit on the outside of uh, any lolas that sort of are drawn above other tangles just to give it some tr uh, more three-dimensional kind of look. So if you notice over here with this lola that doesn't have uh, other tangles behind it, I've not added shading to the edge. And then over here on this lola where it sort of just sits next to the symphony, I've not shaded it as well. So it's just this part and this part. Uh, any tangles that went behind my border, I added a tiny bit of shading just to make it look like uh, there is some overlap between those tangles. And uh, if you've noticed, I actually skipped the way that I teach my classes. Usually I shade in the order of the tangles that I drew, but I skipped over eternity because we will be adding colors to it. So we don't want uh, our graphite to be uh, making our colors muddy. So you're just leaving your eternity bright white and clean, no, no shading to it. And I've uh, realized that the top edge of my Lola is quite, quite empty, right? It's kind of flat, not three-dimensional enough because I do draw quite large. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of shading to the tops of the Lola that I have. If your Lola is too small, please don't attempt this. You'll have a bad time. Uh, and uh, also everything will look very dark. And uh, Too small? And yeah. don't attempt what? Don't attempt shading the tops. La. <laughs> shading the tops? Uh. Yeah. Otherwise, everything will be grey-grey. Why? Oh. What? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you I mean, why? Know. This is rebellious streak. Why? Why cannot? No, after after <laughs> being her business partner for so many years, right? If yeah. I don't uh, ask her the difficult questions, right? Then mm. I'll always be stuck answering her difficult questions. You see? Yeah. So it has to be like a good balance, right? No, no. Yeah. The 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 line that Debbie told me at the start of I think it was like towards the end of last year. The lie. Like, no, no. The, Did you the, say the, the lie? The line. The line. <laughs> the line. The, Oh my gosh. <laughs> the line that Debbie will tell me is, <sighs> oh, all your bad habits, I must learn. I'm like, no, yeah, cannot. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, why cannot? I'm like, no, I'm supposed to learn good habits. <laughs> yeah, so, so she, she so, loves to, to find like ridiculous stuff for us, right? To, to deal with, right? Yeah. So we, we give it back to her. Yeah, mm. a taste so of her own bad habit is, medicine. This bad habit is when someone tells you to do something, then you must ask, Why? Must no, you must ask way? 10 times. Yeah, yeah. ask 10 times. And Why cannot do this person? the other way? Just do lah, yo. Alright. It's kind of, it's kind of like sometimes you just you just want to do something quick. Nah. But then she wants no. to have like 10,000 uh, discussions uh, before she does it, you know? So, That's yeah. That's the reason behind it. Yeah. So your yeah. symphony, depending on how you drew it, you can also choose to add shading to the outside of it. I'm not going to do that. Uh, instead, I've drawn a little aura on the inside of my S shape. So on that little sharp point, I'm going to add just a tiny bit of shading. And then my uh, tortillon will blend that shading downwards. And then if you want, if you have a gemstone uh, in the middle of your symphony, what you could do is shade the outside of that. Uh, bezel just to make it a little more three-dimensional and then in just a bit I'll be showing you how to shade a gemstone using graphite pencil isn't that a pearl pearl <laughs> gemstone well technically it's a pearl is a, yeah but, but pearl is a gemstone as well isn't it it's not a stone though gem gemstone gem is a no oh my gosh <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. A pearl is formed by an animal, which is a mm. shell, right? A conch. Do you call it a conch? Oh, maybe conch? it's not a conch, but yeah, it's, it's formed by a shell, an oyster, right? So it's technically like, not a stone, what? A stone is. Well, lunar flux, I usually shape the ah. lunar flux shape, the pointed part. And then the top part of it, the little bulbous part, I just add I hope little Tiffany is watching. And then little and Tiffany then, can correct us later. 
Oh yes. I don't it's know. Not a, it's not a stone, Andy Dabi. <laughs> so, stone from the mouth of babes, right? Mm. Yeah. We'll hear from it later, I guess. We'll hear from her later, I guess. Mm. Text, text you through her mother's phone. You are, you are putting out misinformation. Yeah. <laughs> to, be, to, be, to be fair, she's very good in her, her, her common knowledge, you know, like her mm. scientific knowledge and stuff. Mm. I think that the B side has jets. 3, 4. It's 4 p.m. currently in Singapore. So the National Day Parade should be starting soon-ish. At this point of time, you might want to take a step back from your tile, see any places that need extra bit of shading, and just add some shading to those parts. And then we will be moving on to shading our gemstone or oh, rather our pearl, as the VC. It's not stone. <laughs> not stone. It's something else. Is it me or they are starting very early? Yeah, I was gonna say four PM is really yeah. early. <laughs> or maybe this is like the this is like the you know, the pre last parade. Minute, um, yeah, yeah, pre parade. dress rehearsal kind yes. of like panic mode where I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're coming to my side already. Yeah, it's quite loud. This this one was very loud. Um, Today is National Day, ma. It's the actual day. I'm quite sure if, if you are located in other parts of uh, the world, probably can live stream the National Singapore National Day Parade on like YouTube. Oh, I haven't watched in more than 10 years you know? wow. I think I watched last year I, I think Stephanie day. is more patriotic patriotic than <laughs> it's true. yeah yeah don't, yeah, it's true. yeah the well I don't mind giving the tangle but I mind a lot of other things so I won't mm. <laughs> I, Susan I, Susan type in chat she says it's the rehearsal war. yeah it's the rehearsal la. Mm. All right, Old so I'm quite, I'm, I'm quite happy with my tile. I'm going to be switching over to my sketchbook just to show you guys how to uh, shade a tile. I'm going to show you two ways. One is the simple, I call it the smiley uh, technique. Basically, you just sort of shade a smile on the bottom left corner of your pole and then you smudge it upwards. If you notice, there is a little gap in between the edge of the gemstone and the smile. You don't want to shade to the very, very edge of your gemstone, your pearl. And then we're going to bring it upwards to the top right hand corner and then just shade along that top edge. So on this top right hand side corner, my shading is connecting with the black line of my gemstone, leaving a white highlight. And that is the very simple way of drawing a pearl. The other way, is a way that Kei Yoshino actually taught it. So we are shading kind of a bracket, I guess, with a line. I think she has it on her blog as well. Yes, she does. Yeah. So it's kind of like a bracket. So it's a, this shape with a line in the middle. Obviously, you, you don't draw harsh lines. You're very gently uh, adding more graphite to your your paper and then we blend it upwards and downwards so the bottom half will actually be darker than the top the top will have that bright white highlight the bottom can be a slight just a slight bit uh, more gray and then you go back in with your pencil just to darken the middle part And then with your white uh, jelly roll, if you have a white pen, you can add highlights to your gemstone. If you don't, that's fine as well. So here are the two ways. Depending on what you prefer, you can choose to add it to your time. Yeah.
So I've skipped ahead a little bit um, because 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 I just felt like it. But um, <laughs> don't give you reason, okay? <laughs> Let me well, live my life. I will. I'm not done with the the shading yet, so I'll probably still come back to it. But I decided to sort of like test and see whether my magicals are the correct consistency that I want uh, them to be. And so I've tested on the back of a towel, and I think that they're ready to go. So. So um, I'm actually transferring the color onto my Eternity. Actually, this red is quite um, good for the Singapore red and white flag colors. I think you just have to use it very dense, Steph. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So we were talking about our what we were going to use earlier. Mm. And she was saying that it's not a real red. Mm. It's mm. more mm. orange. But I think it's okay. I think you just have to make it quite dense. And then, and then my towel is feathering. Oh dear. <laughs> but it's okay, I'll patch it up later. Alright, so I'm quite happy with my gemstone. I don't think I'm going to add white highlights to it. Because I like it as it is. And then the last step, of course, like Debbie was saying, is uh, the red colour of the Eternity. So it's the heart-shaped tangle that we have. Dolly, I see you in live chat. She says that I like all your chattering that you do while tangling. Thank you very much. We sometimes wonder whether people get tired of I think we talk too much. Mm. We talk too much. So I am using my lighter Tombow pen. This is 845. Uh, of course, if you have a smaller set of Tombows, or if you are using a different color, a uh, different coloring supply. For example, you're using inks like Debbie. Or technically, she's using like water, pigment watercolors, right? In this gang is uh, pigment watercolors. But if you're using inks, or um, maybe you're using uh, color pencils, or perhaps you're using a different kind of marker. Maybe you're not using Tombow's. Maybe you're using Koi. You can just follow along with whatever red colored uh, coloring supplies that you have. So I am going to add just a tiny bit of shading in this little tangle eternity. So I'm starting first with a lighter red and then switching over to my darker red. This is 847. I'm just going to add um, a tiny bit of shading. It's kind of the bottom of each of the sections. Dolly says, you're welcome and no, you do not talk too much. It is <laughs> enjoyable to listen to you both. Thank you very much, Dolly. We are very, quite well behaved today. Of... Yes, you should join uh, our... Compared to when we life. have Susan um, <laughs> mm. at our live shows. Yes. <laughs> and the live shows are interesting because they have uh, questions and, more yeah, so we run the live show slightly differently from a class. So, slightly, sure. Uh, <laughs> why? Very differently? Okay, very, very differently. Different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this one is more of a class. Okay. So we are more collected. Mm. There's a plan. <laughs> Usually, every single week you'll hear Debbie say the same thing. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, we yeah. find it very funny. Well, it's okay to not know what you're doing, what? Yeah, no of course, plan. definitely. So, so I was telling someone the other day, no she plan. said that her towel had no plan. Now I'm like, no plan is also That's a plan. Okay. Yeah, no plan is also a plan. <laughs> I mean, if I mean, it's fun to have plans, but then it's also fun to not have plans, lah. I guess it's not a fixed thing, yeah. Hmm. Well, for us, uh, when we do our social tangling sessions on Wednesdays, it's kind of in the middle of our work week. 
uh, where the team is, uh, well, our team works remotely most of the time. Um, and, well, apart from Stephanie, because she's at the studio most of the time. Um, so basically, when we come together to tangle uh, live, it's a kind of like a way to de-stress as well, together as a team. So in a way, all the all the random chatter and all the discussions and stuff like that is really part and parcel of being uh, part of our team, you know? Yeah, so it's kind of fun that we have uh, an archive of them now and also embarrassing because now, you know, when it's on the internet, it stays on the internet, right? All the nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm actually uh, doing it in reverse, uh, doing this in reverse because Steph was uh, shading everything first before going to shade her eternity and then I'm going backwards. So I've I've done my eternity but the colour is feathering so I need to think of how to fix it later on. Can you see the feathering? Is it obvious? Mm. No, huh? still okay, still good. Wait, I should hold it up. Okay, hang on, yeah, hold it up. maybe it's because far away. Yeah. Yeah. Hold it far away. <laughs> Yeah. Can you see the ah, feathering? Yes, so, yeah, yes. it's spread. Yeah. It's quite genuine once it's completely dry. I'll see about it. La. I think I'll finish um I'll finish shading everything else first and then we'll see what, what happens next. Mm-hmm. No right. plan is also a plan. Yeah, no plan is also a plan. So once you are done with um your shading and your colouring, you're going to want to step back one last time to take a look at your tile, see any things that needs a little bit of adjustment. And then you're going to switch to your pen, your black pen, and you're going to add your initial. Maybe you should explain like what people do when they do their initials. Oh, what do people do? Yeah. I don't even know what they do. <laughs> well, well they... artists normally, um, if the work of art doesn't have the artist's initial, it's not as valuable, isn't it? Mm. Well, for some artists, it's, uh, they, are, they consistently don't sign their work, so that's like their top high. And as we speak, my tortillon is unraveling itself. So what is Zhao Pai? You have international viewers. I don't know what Zhao Pai is. Signature. There we go. That's the, what they're known for. Trademark. Trademark. There we go. Yeah. So, it's basically... Like common, their favourite practice. La, part of their practice. But basically, you want to take ownership of your art. So, you're, you're going to add a symbol of yourself. So... Uh, the way yeah, a symbol of yourself. Mm, yes. So you can draw a stick man. Uh, you can actually. So I had this student who uh, used the Urdu word for peace as her initials. That's fine as well. Yeah. Uh, the founders of the Zentangle method, Maria Thomas, has an M and a T. And then the other one, Rick Roberts, has an R going in every single direction. So I thought that was quite cool. Yeah. My mom, who's also a teacher, certified Zentangle teacher, Joan To, and then Debbie has that D and N. Susan, I think hers is a, a sharp S. I'm scared to draw wrong. Let I draw. Hers is a bit more complicated. I'm looking at like her artworks at the studio. Then you only oh, scared to yeah you're only afraid to draw Susan's wrongly, but all of ours you're very confident, is it? Yeah, I got simple ma. <laughs> mine mine's even more oh. simple. Mine's a cursive S. And then I have a Chinese surname Zuo that I put in a box. That is my initials. Yeah, depending on uh what I'm feeling that day. I'm switch around. Yeah. What you're feeling that day? Mm, what I'm feeling that day. <laughs> Am I feeling more Chinese or more <laughs> Western? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. And then the last step to the 8 step method is of course to appreciate your... Uh, but I effort. guess that's also part of what uh, creating your initial you know, should be about. You know, it's kind of like spontaneous. You, you, you uh, update it also. I think after a while you feel like your initial does not represent who you are in your artistic journey. So you update it. Uh, my initial didn't used to look like this. Used to look very different. Yeah, what was your initial before? 
<laughs> must go and like dig out all the old house. <laughs> the long, long. I thought it was house. always the S, what? No, it wasn't. When I first oh, started, yes. it, was, it didn't look like that. Yeah. And it's only in more recent artworks that you see my Chinese initial. Yeah. So you're, you're done with your towel. You're going to appreciate it. Hold it out at arm's length. Turn it this way and that. See whether it brings you new perspective as you are turning the towel. Appreciate the hard work that you put in. Appreciate uh, the beautiful tangles that you've created. And uh, be, be kind to yourself as well. Okay? Don't, don't criticize too much of uh, what you've created. Yeah. Maybe it's gone full colors for her tile. I don't know whether I regret though. <laughs> it's kind of like too many colors. Poor thing. Yeah, so while, while Debbie is finishing up her tile, uh, I'd like to say thank you for attending today's session. Lots of fun. Uh, again, if you'd like to watch a recording of today's session, you can go to our Instagram page at Seven Forest Five Rivers. And uh, by tomorrow, you I'll have the uh, recording available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash c slash 7 f 5 studio. If you tangle along, please post your artworks in uh, our lovely group, 7 f 5 Bar Challenge. You can search 7 f 5 Bar Challenge directly in the Facebook search bar or go to bit.ly slash fb 7 f 5 Bar. I guess if you tag us, we will also feature your art. So, yes. yeah, uh, if you like, can you use, can also tag us. Yeah, and you can use the hashtag 7 f 5 Bar Live uh, so that we can see your tiles. Hashtag we also have a session tomorrow uh, yes, with so Susan. I was going to mention um, all of our individual tiles will be featured on our personal Instagram pages. You can find Debbie at tangled.pursuits. Susan, who uh, is in the live chat, but she's not streaming because uh, today is not a, a good day for her to stream. But it's at susanyo.czt and you can find me at halfpen underscore will draw. Yeah, to refresh. Uh, our memories, we use a string inspired by the numbers 5 and 7 to celebrate uh, Singapore's 57th year of independence. And we use the tangles Eternity, Lola, Symphony, and Lunar Flux. All of which are Singapore uh, tangles de deconstructed in, in Singapore. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, following along as we tangled today. I had a lot of fun. Debbie, do you have fun? I think this was quite an enjoyable towel. Yeah. But I think I made a mistake by adding too many colours. Oh no. <laughs> but I, I think it's okay. Rainbow vomit as you yeah, call it. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You always find a way to make it work. Yeah. Very so nice. this is like the full colour version. Yeah. So this was my demo uh, black and white version. <laughs> Very, Very different. Yeah, Very different, right? So the idea, the idea with um, the Eternity... Is that, you know, when you form a mosaic... Come, Debbie, so... turn your tile so that our tiles match up. Oh, wait, uh, let me remove all of these things first. I don't want to spill the red ink. Oh, it will be terrible. Yeah, so basically the idea is that you can sort of form a mosaic uh, this way with the red. Enaughty? Yeah. Eternal naughty? <laughs> <laughs> Eternal naughty. Eternal naughty. Eternally naughty. Mm, terrible. Yeah, so that was the idea behind having the eternity tangle in the bottom uh, right hand corner so that mm. we can sort of uh, build a mosaic this, this way. So if you are interested in uh, participating in the mosaic, you can always tag us. And uh, you can also submit Facebook. it to the group, and there's many ways. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so I uh, will be streaming live tomorrow. Susan will be with us. Uh, it will be a lot more chaotic and a lot more fun. <laughs> so do join us. Are you implying that Susan is chaotic? No, it's just the three of us. It's like um, the the nonsense Susan, ratio. Susan, she doesn't like you. No, no, no. I, I do like, she, she makes sourdough bread for me. So I like, and then Debbie gives me tangles. So that's why I stick around. No, I'm Excuse just me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, yeah, we'll be streaming live at uh, 2.45 p.m. Singapore time. And uh, we hope to see you then. And even if you can't make it live, uh, all the recordings are always available on our Instagram page and also on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for spending the past, what, uh, 
45. So an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely mm. time today. Yeah. And uh, happy National Day, Singapore, to all Singaporeans. And, uh, yeah. Happy National Day. Yeah. And we hope you enjoy the parade if you're watching it later on. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.